for no fucking reason. Yeah, for um, no reason, man. You, you know what I'm saying? That, that's I'm why. I'm you my honest opinion. No, you kicked me off last time for this, Dad. Look, I didn't kick, let me make this extremely clear. I didn't kick you off because of your opinions. I kicked you off because you were hurting the quality of the show and you were annoying What the, is hurting the, the quality? Well, yeah, I'm going to annoy the chat when I disagree with you guys. Yeah, you but, guys, hmm? your chat, a lot of them, you have like an audience capture. It's an echo chamber. There are people in your chat who even were like, she's right on the stats. I don't know why you guys kicked her yeah, off. Sims. You know? No, it's, it's not about the stat. It's that you argue in bad faith about certain things. So, for example, right, that discussion in particular was, hey, marriage really isn't in your best interest as a man, period. And then you went ahead and pulled out this straw man of like, oh, well, it's because yeah, actually you do realize that like a younger, you don't want the age gap to be too much. And then educated women with bachelor's degree actually have lower divorce rates. No, that doesn't was, take away from the point that marriage is not a good proposition for men in general. Actually, how it happened was you were saying that a younger girl is more moldable and it's more successful to be in a relationship with a younger girl. And I was saying that if you have a 10 year age gap, your likelihood of divorce goes up by 40 percent. And that is just the stats that was how that happened and then we got into selection bias because i've tried to explain to you multiple times that if you're just looking at the women that are getting divorced and you're like 70 percent of women initiate divorces and it goes up for college educated women but in general college educated women are less likely to be in that group getting divorced in the first place you didn't like that no it's that see how i said something that's objectively true and then you went ahead and you framed it in a way to make an argument for a stance that you have i'm just saying younger women in general tend to be more impressionable are going to follow your lead under better partners and then you went ahead and took from that Oh, well, you know what? Actually, age gap, if once you pass a certain amount, the divorce rates actually go up. Well, wouldn't that be and it's a like, good that doesn't, it, like, no, because see, that's what you do. You, I'm saying something, and then you go ahead, and you find something very tightly aligned, and you'll be like, oh, well, actually, and then you make a completely different argument. No, it's argument, not, though, because if you're you saying, you, well, study. I assume that you're saying those younger women are more moldable, therefore your relationship would be more successful. A good comeback to that is that the statistics show your relationship is less likely to be successful with a younger woman. That's why I brought up, I think it's very relevant. Uh, well, she could be younger than you and still be within that age range that we're talking about that is below it. So she could still be younger than you. Well, and still... age rate, even a five Both things year? can be true, but that's what I'm trying to say is that you argue in bad faith. Like, How is I just... that arguing in bad faith? That's 100% arguing in bad faith because that doesn't actually challenge what I said. You're just countering it with something that doesn't really align okay, with Okay, well, what we I'm can saying. leave it up to the audience. I would say that if someone's giving the advice to date somebody younger, right, you guys are all like I would say, and even a five-year age gap, 10-year age gap, 20-year age gap, all of those increase your likelihood of the relationship not working out divorced like statistically so maybe that's not the best advice maybe even though they're moldable they're clearly not moldable enough because the likelihood of divorce is going up so that's what i was saying i i don't think that's arguing in bad faith mm, it, it is because i'm just saying because you brought it to a completely different topic i don't think that's a different topic but okay it's a com <laughs> it's not a different topic when you're saying these younger women are more moldable and they're better I'm saying then how come it's like the same kind of arguments you make then how come you're more likely to get divorced with those women That's my question. Well, it it, how is that not relevant? It's on it's on the age gap though There's it, also it, a demographic shift in that too So if you're if you're talking about a guy who's 50 and a woman who's 35 That's a whole lot different than if it's you're talking about a guy who's 40 and a woman who's like 25 Well, in because general, there's because if he's gonna say that women are more moldable as as like they get as they age a woman who's 25 years old is going to be uh, probably a little bit more like, let's say, fresh and naive, I guess, well, you know, a little less experienced, to put it nicely, than a woman who's 35 who's already got another 10 years on the woman who's 25. So is the 35-year-old woman also as moldable as a 25-year-old? And I would argue that that's not the well, case. Well, and then the super young, like the, I'm sure if you guys actually are looking at stats, I think you do a good job of this. 20, a woman younger than 25 is more likely to get divorces too. The good ages are 25 to 32 are the best ages to get married statistically for the least, least likelihood of divorce. Yeah, well, unfortunately, that's not how it works right now. It's uh, what is the average age of first marriage is 30 for women and 32 for men right I now. I get that, States. but a lot of this show is saying, oh, these younger women are better and they're moldable and blah, blah, blah. And I'm saying those younger women are actually, by, by following the advice of this show, you are putting yourself at a greater statistical likelihood of divorce. That was my argument. Well, you're also, here's the thing, you're not taking everything into account. We also teach guys you need to be financially you know, aware. You need to be in shape. You need to have frame. You need to be a leader. You need to be dominant, etc. All these other things come into play, and then you go ahead and get the younger woman. So you're just you're, you're missing out all the other stuff but that I, we're I, giving I, what, advice. Contextually, what I'd like to know is so there's like a top five reasons for divorce, and the majority of the divorce is initiated by women. So my, my question is, in the where there's a larger age gap, what are those top five reasons? Are they the same top five reasons uh, if if you're talking about somebody who's three years apart? 
Uh, three years, I, do, I don't think there was any great statistical likelihood of your divorce going up for three years. But the five, ten years, five, I think it was. Well, what I'm saying is, like, the, 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 are the reasons yeah, the same? Yeah, the reasons. Like, for I instance, I think domestic abuse is, like, that. third. Yeah, or... like, I, don't, I know in general, like, infidelity, lack of commitment, those are. But I don't know if I've seen any data specifically singling out the couples with the biggest age gap and why those couples specifically got divorced. Yeah, so. Like I said, because you're saying, oh, because you're only taking one piece of information and saying, well, statistically I'm speaking, you're, the rates of uh, divorce are you know, going to go up, which that might be true. But if you follow the other things we teach, getting your money on point, getting in shape, having frame, not being a loser, uh, not letting woman lead, you know what I mean? Like being dominant and assertive. That's going to make you way more attractive. I mean, maybe, but I, I wouldn't I haven't seen any data on that either, that if you're if you're this and you're that and you're richer than the 10 year the woman that's 10 years likely is less likely 10 years younger than you is less likely to divorce you i think the money because there is a lot of evidence that the more money you make up to a certain no, 300k point, yeah you and then it goes to like 600 and then it goes up and it goes, it's like a whole thing but other than that i haven't seen that fit men are less likely to get divorced or any of those other things you're saying the money one is the only one that has statistical i'm symptoms. curious With how, how do... you measure fit men getting divorced i don't know yeah, that's why that, i'm asking that no, you never would but and, and there's <laughs> probably never going to be a way to measure that but what i am saying is though is that when you look at guys that you know get divorced or whatever what happens they don't see it coming why don't they see it coming because they don't understand female nature they don't understand frame they don't understand being oh, attractive. What you're saying, yeah so, so, that, so that's what i would use so, to, to measure it i think what he's saying is what you're saying is relevant but the, the thing is these are men who are just dating women because they're younger and they're still not prepared to date women at all and so the mm -hmm. difference in age gap has a, is a problem but you're saying if you're able to if you're financially success, successful and you're able to lead that this would not be an issue yeah because the thing is when most guys get divorced they don't see it coming a lot of the times so yeah. when they don't see it coming well that tells me you don't know what the fuck is going on you're unaware you are don't realize that you already lost a relationship years ago months ago whatever yeah. and it's because you don't have frame i I'd, I'd be curious as to uh, i think one of the main reasons reasons why a woman who's like 15 10 even 20 years younger than someone is marrying them i think they would be financially stable but you know maybe they're not well yeah that's that's of course that's a component but that's the problem because he relies on that too much wait i want i want to say something quickly mm -hmm. i think with all due respect mm -hmm. even if you have all those great things going for you uh -huh. when it comes to people getting young and in People getting married young in general, they're much more likely to divorce. And I think a big part of that is that your brain is fully not developed. You're still not your long term decision making skills are not fully developed. So I think like even if you're like this amazing guy, if you're getting married with a woman who's like too young, um, as she like matures and grows older and that part of her brain changes, mm -hmm. she might start making different decisions. So I think that's another reason to keep in mind that like, hey, maybe waiting like a little bit later is a better choice because she's more emotionally and mentally mature and can make stable decisions. Yeah, and 25, I think that's literally 25, 26 is when the prefrontal cortex fully develops. Right. So it's that's, that's funny you should say that. Couples who marry before age 32 experience lower divorce rates. Well, look there at is between a sweet, 25. There's a sweet spot in terms of marital age for those looking for the least risk of divorce. That's because uh, couples who marry at 25 are 50% less likely to divorce compared with couples who marry at 20 uh, but those who marry after age 32 divorce rates increase by 5% per year until the age that uh, until the age they are wed yeah that's why I said 25 to 32 so that so lines, younger that lines exactly well the 25 is a sweet spot right yeah 25 to 32 people when they say oh no get mm -hmm. a woman as like young as possible 18 that's when you start running into the fact that mm -hmm. her brain's not fully developed so you might even you can be this amazing person, she's still not fully emotionally, well, mentally then, matured. Well, between 18 and 28 is when women are in their party or their whole phase, any, as it is anyways. It's when they're at well, the peak the thing. agency. Well, what's, what's better, for her to be molded by society or be molded by you? Yeah, she's impressionable at that point and she isn't like fully developed, as you guys would say. But why not develop her under your frame where she understands through your lens how to operate, how to move, how to behave, etc. I think it's better... For me to take her when she's still impressionable and mold her into the woman that I want versus society doing it for me. Let's be honest. Society's going to turn her into a promiscuous whore that thinks that it's okay to sleep around and do a bunch of stupid shit and have indiscriminate sex with the highest status guys that she can get. And then she's going to be fucked up when I get her. Well, I think the point is that even if you try to mold her just because like mentally she's not fully developed, she might be making these choices with you that once her prefrontal cortex is fully developed, she'd be making different choices. So it's like, okay, like... You can still find a partner that has your same values aligned, that you don't risk the whole idea of like, oh, no, now you have the mental maturity, things have changed, the brain chemistry has changed, and now you have that risk. So I think so, it's a little bit less riskier to find. Could, could the risk be because 
you know, men find her the most attractive in that p time period between, mm -hmm. let's just say, 18 yeah. and 23, that that also her relative attractiveness, she's aware of it because of, let's say, social media, that makes it more likely for her to want to divorce. You saying that? Um, no, I think the risk is literally just the fact that since the prefrontal cortex isn't like fully developed and yeah, hasn't but, but, slowed but, down yet, like if people find her attractive, don't find her attractive, it's just not the same level of decision making, a 23 year old making a decision as like a 25 year old. Right, but that's what I'm saying. Like a pre So for instance, her ability to determine this is wrong, I'm in a relationship and I shouldn't be doing this, is not fully formed before the age of 25. So even though she's more attractive to most men, her ability to stay in the relationship is it's going to be harder for her because she's under the age of 25. So oh. do you think they're all divorcing under the age of 25 too? Because I think the average year, like amount of years people are married, like seven years. Or so, so are you yeah. saying it's that five these, to nine? So are, seven. Yeah. So yeah. are these people that are marrying at like 19? You're saying they're getting divorced? Oh, I don't, I don't know. That's what I'm asking. I'm saying the, the proposition of is that one of the reasons why you think that the divorce rate would be higher with a greater uh, difference in age? What, well, why do you think? Is that why you think? I don't know. Uh, it could be. I mean, because okay. right, like, we want them more, but that means they have more options. So, in that case, they would need to be divorcing while they're still in their peak ages. So that could be. So I mean, so five, be seven years, eighteen to that. eighteen to twenty-five is seven years. Yeah, maybe, mm -hmm. but yeah. I don't, I don't know. And also keep in mind, women are fairly delusional as to like where their sexual market mm -hmm. value peak actually is. Women tend to think it's five to ten years actually what it really is. So then that would be going kind of against. No, but you're but you're saying they'll like you said women will divorce at like what twenty five to thirty two. No, I said twenty five to thirty two is the best ages where they'll be least likely to divorce. Under twenty five has a higher likelihood, and over thirty two has a higher likelihood. Mm -hmm. Sorry, hero. Well, the other thing too is that um, I would say the internet, right? The grass is well, the, that's, the, and grass, that's that's the whole. The when I'm looking at the study Sorry, right there. It's it's comparative to where we were like in the 20th century versus the 21st century. Mm -hmm. So if you look at divorce rates, they tend to be going down because. Fewer and fewer people are actually getting married in the first place. So mm -hmm. we're at the lowest rate of marriage in like recorded history, like 5.1 per 1,000 or six. I think we might have come up to six mm -hmm. recently, but it was at 5.1. And has gone steadily down since 1965 when but, hormonal birth control was introduced. Do you, know the one, do you know the one group of women where it's not going down for, though? It is highly educated women and women of high socioeconomic. Yes, because, We're got, the because only they have women. more resources to lose. That's why. But yeah, but still, right. it, so there's validity in what you're saying, but also the ones who do get divorced are the ones who are college educated. So the stats reflect in both no, ways. No, 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 no. They're they're not, not, but, yeah. So the ones who are least likely to get divorced are the ones who are college educated, but then the ones who get divorced, the majority of them are the college educated. That ones. doesn't make sense. No, no. So two different stats. Think about it. Separate your brain. The ones who, so you're saying that there are women who are college educated. They are the least likely to get divorced. But of the ones who do get divorced, mm -hmm. the majority of those women who do get divorced are college educated. You uh, get it now? I would say that those women that are, yes, I think if you're college educated, they're, they're you have resources, you're going to be less likely to stay in a shitty situation for money. I agree with you there. Okay, but you see how they're saying that the stats play out from that perspective as well. And another mm -hmm. thing that I want to mention is I think the disparity when we're talking about these stats is like, when you're talking about people breaking up at these ages, most of them aren't being taught this information about how to be a high value man, yeah, how to exemplify correct. these various different characteristics. So what yeah, they're talking what about say, yeah. comes from a totally different frame versus the statistics that we're looking at for most divorces or separations or whatever mm -hmm. it may be. I'm just saying like, if you want to lower your likelihood of divorce, the three things you should be doing is a woman who's between 25 and 32, it's her first marriage and she's college educated. If you can, if you can get someone with my level of education, the divorce rate cuts in half. Highly educated people but one, we're getting married more than it. everyone else is going down. We're going up. Mm -hmm. This is the best thing you can do. If you want to have a long marriage, go get college educated, marry between what, 25 what and about, 32. What about a woman's previous sexual partners before she's married? So there's that. Are you talking about the Institute of Family Studies? So, so I guess in that case, mm -hmm. yeah, after nine or 10, it goes up. But two is apparently the worst. If you have two partners, you should have sex with a few more and then you'll be in the sweet spot, I guess. Uh, you know, what, what I meant before was, the, you know, the concept of, I don't know if you can pull up that study, but... Um, oh, the it, new one, right? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, so when they surveyed uh, women, they surveyed 7,000 women and they asked them, the ones who said that they cheated and the ones who said they didn't cheat, the ones who did cheat said that they had had sex with about nine partners and the ones who didn't cheat, it was about 3.8. And so it was 230% more sexual partners for women who did cheat than didn't. Yeah, so I, I agree. High go, body count does increase your likelihood of divorce, but actually that isn't as significant as the three. I said the top three things. That's not the only three things right. you should look for. So I, I, I think that's totally fine. If you are somebody who's like, I really don't want to get divorced, blah, blah, blah. 
I want to find someone who's like, if you are virgins getting married, have the least likelihood of divorce, you can do all that. But to say, oh, I'm only going to look at body count, but then I want a girl who's 19, not college educated, blah, blah, blah. You're kind of shooting yourself in the foot, is what I'm saying. Yeah. Statistically. Well, well, here, because here, here's the thing, because you were saying like, oh, yeah, that's actually bad advice because you guys tell guys to get women that are young but in their peak years, 18 to 23. What I'm saying is that that's just one component of what we tell guys to do. But on top of that, right, that ability to do that is contingent upon your skill set as a man and your competence. Are you getting money? Are you in shape, etc.? Are you actually more than likely the best option that she can get compared to her peers? If the answer is yes, then you're going to be fine. Like, I get what you're saying. Well, actually, well, between how do you know they're going to be fine? Do you just what, feel what do you it? How do you, like, where are you getting that if you have your money right, etc.? Because I assume that if you're a 20-year-old and you're marrying a 35-year-old, you're not going to marry, and you're attractive, you're not marrying a broke 35-year-old, but you're still going to be likely to divorce him. So I'm curious as to why you think that. Because you're only, because what you're saying here is you're just going off of just strictly age, but on uh, for average people, too. Like, mm -hmm. remember, keep in mind, a lot of these guys that are getting divorced, etc., they're fucking suckers. Oh, happy wife, happy life. My wife is the boss. Like, all this bullshit that we've indoctrinated men to believe believe where women are leaders they're not and do you think this is overrepresented in the group that's marrying younger women than than the norm 100 percent because most men are simps and most and most men don't understand what it takes to be attractive to women because the things that make a man attractive are not politically correct so it's not often taught if you do teach guys these things what happens you get canceled you call them get called massages you get labeled like we are where we're assholes but we tell guys what it takes to really be attractive to women and unfortunately when you display these things it's unfavorable to women because you start to reveal the unflattering realities about female nature. Women want the best guy. Women want a guy that's better than them in every single regard. Women are very surface level when you actually look at what they're attracted to. Women, what they're attracted to is actually way more linear than guys think from a physicality standpoint. So when you start to say these things, you get labeled a misogynist and they censor you. So most men have not had this information for decades. So, but are simps more likely to marry a woman 10 years younger than them? That's my question. Like, are, if, why, if the divorce rate is higher for people that are marrying women 10, 15, 20 years younger than them, are those men more likely to be simps because they're more likely to get divorced? What, what, I, what I'm saying is that the knowledge that I'm that we provide, because you're just looking at it from an age perspective. What I'm saying is that you can't just go ahead and say, I'm going to get a bad bitch that's 21 and not take in all the other stuff that we're giving. Because, yes, you will get divorced. But what I'm saying is that the guys that you're talking about that are getting divorced off of this age gap, etc., they're not... Uh, Sorry. They're not applying all the other things that we teach men. Mm -hmm. How do you know that, though? How do you know they're less likely to apply so, it than people? Because most people are average. Yeah, because most guys... Most people, most men and women are so average. So here's, yeah. here's, here's one piece of data. So Dr. Buss talks about this in uh, The Evolution of Desire, about the May-December wedding. Yeah. And this has to do with uh, the amount of mate guarding men do uh, when th the wife is significantly younger than them. And so what he's saying is like, these are behaviors that generally we would consider like, can we say simply behaviors? Yeah, yeah, like, yeah, yeah. We're, we're now. Yeah. So, <laughs> been, uh, it's just like being like overly reactive in the situation and not having boundaries to the point where they get like ex digging through their phone or whatever. If I had mm -hmm. to dig through my girl's phone, I would just break up with her, mm -hmm. you understand? And so the, right. the point is, this like is that. yeah, this is, it, this is essentially what Dr. Buss talks about. In these relationships, there's exceptional mate guarding, which mm -hmm. comes off as like, you know, kind of beta behavior. And so I think that, that kind of leads to what he's saying. So then you you would say that you are more likely to exhibit that beta behavior if you're marrying a woman that's way younger than well, you. Well, the, the reason why is because she so is yes? so much. I just want to know. Right, yes. right, right. So, so the point I'm trying to make is because she is more attractive to more men, like the point at which she'd get more right swipes. This is just one data point. Mm. That's the reason why he would be more covetous of her. Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay. Now, if he had boundaries and had a fundamental understanding of his value and had the ability 